Welcome to a special episode. There's a world premiere of the new Audi A3. And we'll also have a look at the new performance EV e-tron S prototype. Hello to What's Up Audi? Did you know that the A3 was the very first of its kind? It was 15 years ago. Audi redefined the hatchbacks and introduced a new category, the Sportback. Audi presented the fourth generation of the A3. What do you think? When we started the A3 design, um, two things were very, very important for us. First, we wanted to make the car more sporty than today. And second, we wanted to invent a very striking, characterful body side theme. We shortened the rear overhang and we shortened also the window graphic by putting in a very thick C-post. And this C-post reminds us a little bit on the, our iconic sports car from the past, the Audi Quattro. The single frame went down and got much wider and so it fits now perfect to the rest of our lineup. Second thing is our new light design because the A3 will be the first Audi which offers a digital light field. So we can always give every version is, um, a different character. So this is a world premiere in the A3. The last thing which is very obvious is a very prominent bumper design which is already in the base model quite sporty. Actually, the rear view is my favorite perspective of the A3 because from this view you can see how the cabin is closing to the back. Under this shoulder line we have very slim lights, which are typical Audi, and they have a very characterful signature which hide the shut line in the night. A part of the new A3 is made out of these bottles? Say what? That sounds crazy. How is this possible, Christine? Yeah, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Our new seat covers um, we do out of the PT bottles. And how did you come up with this idea? In show cars, we always try a little bit more. For example, in the Atron GT show car, there were fabrics out of textile waste, um, PET bottles, new polyester mixed together. And uh, now for the series, um, we complete with uh, PET bottles. And is it just like greenwashing or is it actually sustainable? It is sustainable because at the end, you take something that has already been used and use it again. I have here the fabrics that we bring to the A3 and we start with a face fabric. The face fabric is done of the PT bottles, mm -hmm. mostly. And then um, you have this uh, recycled fleece behind. This is also recycled polyester. The only thing that we are working at the moment is how to bring the fabric and the fleece together because then it's all unmixed, which is a very important point in sustainability. But soon we make also that and then it's really a green product. And when car manufacturers refer to sustainability, they refer to lower fuel consumption, etc. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some more examples of technologies like these? I think that we can make the whole seat sustainable. Mm. So what about the substructure of the seat? You know that this whole thing uh, gets more sustainable. There are materials that can be more sustainable, others it's not so easy. The fabrics really have a big potential in sustainability. Well, Christine, thank you very much for this detailed explanation and I'm very much looking forward to try out this sustainable and I would even say fashionable technology myself. Everybody loves the instant torque of the EVs, but the new Audi e-tron S prototype performs like a real sports car. Three electric motors, advanced e-quattro, make sure that you have ultimate performance and perfect traction at all times. Rally superstar Matthias Ekstrom challenged the e-tron S prototype on a racetrack. I drove the car up the Mausefalle, that was pretty exciting. And now I had my first laps here on the track in Neuburg.
a lot of fun, I must say, and I was really surprised that uh, the car had such a good balance and I really could drift. Uh, with the three engines for sure and the torque vectoring helped uh, to make that happen. And speaking of Quattro, it has been a benchmark system for all-wheel drive for the last 40 years. Some of you might remember its introduction, some of you might have grown up with it. Pushing hard and having fun, <laughs> so now it feels like a proper Quattro again, really. And still today, it fascinates many. And I love to see your passion for these cars. Because last episode, we asked you to send us your favorite Quattro moments. And maybe you will find yourself in them. Unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye, but worry not, we'll be back soon enough. But until then, leave a comment and a like below. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. And of course, we found three awesome YouTube videos for you guys. Enjoy and see you next time. Captain Video. Commence full this nerd freak out in five, four. Just turn around, <laughs> just turn around. Just turn ah, wow. This would be a pristine showroom for us. This is the most sports quattros I think any of us have seen in one place. It's like you start to see the newer cars are like a little bit more worried about like, you know, all this would match. Yeah. But this is like, no, 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 no. We needed that for that. We needed that for that. And that, that that's what works. Lamborghini invited me and a bunch of friends to test the brand new 2020 Huracan Evo. And this is the story about it. I guess this is my turn to drive. Nice, nice, nice. If you could literally buy one car to have for the rest of your life, what would that car look like? Well, arguably, it might look a little bit like this, the Audi RS Q3. I'm a big fan in a few areas, starting with the looks. It's a car you'll take great pride in owning and showing off. It's also compact enough to make it really usable. It's still a car that many of us will definitely want to own. 